Since 1908, the University of Nebraska at Omaha and the City of Omaha have shared a remarkable journey. For 116 years, this dynamic partnership has thrived, positioning UNO as the destination for excellence in education, research, community engagement, and workforce development. Our mission is driven by a commitment to advancing the lives of students, staff, faculty, and the broader Omaha community. At UNO, we believe that success is within reach for everyone as we strive to be the university for all. University of Nebraska at Omaha is the public research university that serves people of the world. It is not just a statement because it sounds great. It's really a commitment, what we set out to do. And I really believe deeply in my heart that our faculty, our staff, we have an opportunity to change a lot of people's lives. When I came here, the University of Nebraska at Omaha was a teaching university. Now I believe we have changed this perception completely. I think Bahamakan is flourished in Omaha. Omaha is not, it's not a small city. A lot of universities are in much, much smaller cities and they struggle in getting patients and getting collaborations. We don't have a problem with that. We have a significant amount of medical doctors. We have a significant amount of patient population that we can have access to. Scott Scholars has really gotten me in the mindset of what can I do for other people. One of the best parts about being in Omaha for research and discovery is that you have access to the entire Omaha community. With the location, we're able to connect to a lot of the organizations that are trying to make a difference. We can help if they have problems with needing a new app or anything like that. It's not that hard for us to go to them. UNO gave me a lot of resources, and those resources are the reason why I'm here. As an immigrant, it's really hard to find like resources to do adult stuff, to do FAFSA. But when I came to UNO, so many people are like ready to help you out. Their support and stuff is like amazing because I'm able to find the resources that I need. Insight stands for the National Counterterrorism Innovation Technology and Education Center. Everyone wanted a center here in University of Nebraska at Omaha. A lot of schools have very talented academics that can carry out this research, but we were the only one that had the whole community behind us. The SMTA experience really like set in stone my decision to come to UNO because UNO truly gives opportunities for everyone. So saying that Omaha is our campus, is our community, is so real, I feel like, because we make an effort to make it our community. And that's something that I don't feel a lot of colleges can say. I always thought there's always a connection there, right, with athletics and community engagement. We often ask fans to come out to games, right? We want people to pack the arena to watch your teams perform. But that goes hand in hand when giving yourself up to the community's various parades, church engagements, functions throughout the community. We do that not because we want them to come to games, because we want to be involved and engaged in everything that's going on in this community of Omaha. I chose UNO's program because when I was coming into the program, they were trying to grow it so much and they were constantly looking for new opportunities for the students. As a Southwest pilot, Destination 225 starts your career so much sooner. To know that a major airline is already looking at you sets you up for success. I feel like Omaha is a destination for success because it offers such a wide variety of different job opportunities tailored to any major here at UNO. My second internship at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nebraska was found through Handshake. I know that I could trust Handshake because it's one of UNO's applications where I could find some of the best internships. UNO really advocates for fair pay, competitive jobs, and I know that I have a future career within Omaha. I think a modern urban university should be defined by the impact and influence this university has on its community. It's defined by 15 minutes perimeter surrounding our physical campus, where we really believe our job, our work, every day is integrated with the community. I do believe that University of Nebraska Omaha has that magical power. UNO will provide the same kind of opportunities for a lot of our students coming through this university. Whether your path leads you through academia, service, exploration, or entrepreneurship, UNO provides the resources, opportunities, and programs necessary for our Mavericks to achieve their aspirations and make a profound impact on the world. 
here at UNO. We celebrate the diverse perspectives that students bring to our classrooms, enhancing Omaha with their unique experiences. We shape communities near and far through groundbreaking research and discoveries that lead to meaningful solutions. We foster a culture of advocacy that engages our community, nurturing its growth and vitality. We pave the way for our students to explore their career paths while strengthening the Omaha workforce with talented, well-prepared individuals ready to contribute. No matter who you are or where you come from, Omaha is more than a city, it's a destination where you can call home. At UNO, we are proud to be the destination for success. Well, good afternoon and welcome. I am so grateful that you have all joined me to give this year's State of the University Address. As I enter my fourth year as your chancellor, I can proudly say that here at the University of Nebraska at Omaha, we have become more than just a place of learning. We have become the destination that embodies ambition, innovation, and community. Now, before we dive into what we have become, we must look back at how we started. In the last three years, I often ask myself these two questions. Why is it essential in the story of UNO? And how we can propel forward for the future of our university? As many of you know, UNO was first established in 1908 as a small institution serving just 30 students. Around the same time, the city of Omaha had around 100,000 residents. Today, the metro Omaha area, also known as Omaha, is the most populous area in Nebraska with about a million people. If one pays attention to the economic development, metro Omaha has gradually extended to the west side of the city, effectively making UNO the center geographically. You shouldn't be surprised that Amwood Park's original name was Central Park. This economic expansion is crucial in the UNO's evolution as we double down on our commitment of supporting the community. And look at where we are now. With the continued support for our home of Omaha, our university now serves 15,000 learners, and has grown into a leading urban metropolitan university, playing a major role in providing accessible and quality education in Nebraska. As we gather today, I stand here proudly and ready to tell you that over the past year alone, we have made tremendous strides. Today, I'm sharing with you this important purpose. You know, is the destination. Sure, you always talk about how Omaha is our campus, but we are the urban university, right? We are the destination. So what does that even mean? You know, is the destination for students and families. This includes all learners from all walks of life, regardless of their social economic background. We strive to create an environment where varied backgrounds and perspectives are not only welcomed, but celebrated. Diverse viewpoints are essential when it comes to intellectual growth within our university. By engaging with a variety of experiences and ideas, our learners will be better equipped to tackle challenges that come their way and leave ready to face the world. No doubt, access to an education is a privilege. And at UNO, we work hard to ensure that every individual has the opportunity to grow within our university community. UNO student body is made of 15,000 students with 66 countries represented, and about 40% of total undergraduates are first generation. That's roughly 5,000 first generation students in our undergraduate student body. This year, I want to highlight the successful partnership between UNO and Metropolitan Community College. UNO witnessed new transfer student enrollment grow by nearly 13%.
Driven by initiative like the transformation project between UNO and MCC, led by Dr. Richard Klein and Dr. Sammy Kaiser from UNO, and Maria Vasquez and Chris Swanson from MCC, the collaborative effort simplifies the transfer process through improved practices, policies, and structures, making it easier for students to navigate their academic journeys between the two institutions. Our people work hard to appeal to all learners, no matter your background, no matter your age. In fact, in 2022, we even graduated someone at 80 years young. We honor our core of educating people of the world. The student body here at UNO is special to me. A university character is often reflected by its student body. And I'll show that UNO is dedicated and driven by the needs of our community. We serve vibrant, curious learners, and the commitment to the community shines through everything we do right here. We strive to create opportunities for our students and measure the success based on their growth in the programs we have to offer here. We welcome students as they are, and support who they become upon graduation. I really enjoy what our new president said in his investiture. Let me quote Dr. Gold. Every entering class is a celebration. Now we must make sure we retain these students and support them all the way to a degree as we pursue the odyssey to extraordinary. While continue, to advance our UNO mission, reaffirm our commitment to fostering a profound diversity of thought, enriching the learning experiences, and enhancing the learning environment. At UNO, we believe that our ultimate goal is to educate individuals from across the globe and prepare them to succeed. We do this by focusing on what we set out to do, which is to educate and to innovate. This is the foundation of which our institution stands on. These objectives enhance the intellectual and practical capacity of our learners while contributing to the advancement of knowledge and societal impact. In this pursuit, we must recognize that advancing social mobility is a sacred task of higher education. Education has the power to transform lives by providing opportunities that transcend economic and social boundaries. We must continue to reflect on whether we're honoring that goal, be it in the classroom, in our research lab, in our interaction with students, and in completing every task. Now, in addition to being the home for learners and families, we must ask if UNO is the destination for our partners. Our commitment to creating and fostering meaningful collaborations and advancing innovation positions us to contribute to shaping the future. We value our partnerships and seek to engage with organizations that share our vision because our relationship with employers and the business community is crucial. In order for us to train our students to be ready for the workforce and create labor agility, it is important to understand how to improve our curriculum and fit the needs of our community and the ever-changing workforce. To stay relevant in education, you know also must be a destination for distinguished faculty members and researchers. Our faculty has supported our vision of advancing the social and economic mobility of our learners while continuing to serve the Omaha community. But they must feel empowered to ensure their passions, work on an ambitious research agenda, and inspire the next generation of learners. Well, you might ask, well, how do we attract such talent to UNO? That is by providing a nurturing environment that faculty and staff want to grow in. But we want to do better. 
In this coming decade, we must be disciplined in allocating resources to support star programs and strategic areas. We must not be apologetic in doubling down our strategies in our comparative strengths. Yes, we will be exceptionally smart in allocating resources, and yes, we will need to make short-term sacrifices. We must not be afraid to compete in areas that we're good at, and by doing so, we enrich our whole university campus. We must trade the fear of giving up short-term comfort for a bigger and brighter future for this university. We must grow the university in a holistic approach. We will study how we can create a smart future for our constituency. Can we do so by providing more sustainable childcare services for our faculty, staff, and students? How about providing affordable accommodation for our new members of the UNO family? Can we meet the demand of our on-campus experience for our students and expand the residential footprint? For our faculty and researchers, we must make it known that we are committed to supporting research that pushes boundaries and addresses relevant issues. We have continued to raise the bar for research. The National Institutes of Health awarded UNO an $11 million grant through the Center of Biomedical Research Excellence Program, emphasizing our commitment to innovation and addressing critical health challenges. This was led by the chair of the Department of Biomechanics, Dr. Alexei Kamensky. Receiving this COBE grant will continue to transform our research efforts here. Now, in addition, the National Counterterrorism Innovation, Technology, and Education, NSITE, the Center of Excellence for Terrorism Prevention and Counterterrorism Research, aligns with our core by doing pragmatic and impactful research for the betterment of national security. Thanks to the leadership of Dr. Gina Ligon, I think somewhere, with NSITE being a part of UNO, this makes us and the state of Nebraska more competitive. As many of you know, last year, NSI also filed a patent for chatbot technology that aims to improve suspicious activity reporting, and that patent was approved. NSI can now work up to $35 million per year in basic ordering agreement with federal agency research. Since its inception in 2020, NSI has been awarded over $40 million in federal grants. For the 24 to 25 fiscal year, NSI once again received $4.6 million from the Department of Homeland Security to conduct and manage counterterrorism research. The world is changing fast. And it is imperative to emphasize that UNO responds to these evolving needs in a timely manner and execute them efficiently. Which means we are also the destination for technology and innovation. In my last day of university address, I spoke to you all about a book by Michael Crow. Please allow me to suggest two additional books for us to read together. Michael Crow's, Michael Crow's Fifth Way, The Evolution of American Higher Education, and Richard Suskins and Daniel Suskins, The Future Professions. Here's the disclaimer, I do not receive commission, <laughs> but I'll take some now. Michael wrote about universities that aspire to excel through innovation technology with cutting edge innovation, while the Suskin dove into how technology will fundamentally challenge the relevance of professionals. I'm a big believer in how the advancement of technology will provide hints on navigating the complex higher education landscape. Many people are worried about a technological unemployment. Simply put, some people are concerned that due to technological advancements such as AI, robots, and machine learning, many will lose their jobs. Yet, history has shown otherwise. I remember this one example in the financial services. When ATMs became such a hit, many predicted all the tellers would lose their jobs. 
The truth is, while the number of tellers did shrink per branch, this country saw a tremendous growth in the number of bank branches in urban cities. Hence, the number of tellers increased. What does this story tell us? Technology advancement increases productivity, resulting in growth of wealth and bigger consumption. Tellers no longer need to spend most of the days to take care of transaction of cash deposits and withdrawals, routine part of their job. Technology allowed these tellers to focus on customer service and financial advice. Economic displacement does not need to happen if we understand how technological progress can be a complement and not a substitute. Going forward, we have to explore our curriculum in the context of technology so we can maximize human creativity and ingenuity and not replace it. Class economics will say when the supply increases, the price will decrease. However, the increase of college graduates in the IT fields, obviously an increase in the quantity of candidates, we don't see the salary of these IT professionals drop. It is what the economists call it, the skill-biased workforce. This phenomenon sheds light on what we need to do as a university. You know, must rethink our curriculum and design programs to equip our students and faculty with the tools they need to lead and innovate in this rapidly changing world. We know technological progress will create skill bias. Hence, we must lean on strategies to produce those candidates. UNO has created an environment where technology flourishes and intel is shared. While we continue to educate our current and future students in areas of need, in order to do this, we must focus on updates and expansion of the Peter Kiewit Institute. Last year, UNO engaged outside consultants to analyze classroom spaces, room capacity, and growth potential. This detailed space assessment showed that PKI home to the College of Information, Science and Technology, and the College of Engineering lack space. Together, those colleges are expected to double enrollment by 2030. ISNT has grown from 600 to more than 1,000 undergraduates. Graduate enrollment has increased by one-third during the same period and expected to double by 2030. The College of Engineering plans to double the enrollment also by 2030. This is not just the expansion of College of ISNT at UNO. It is an articulation to promote transdisciplinary research and workforce development. We will continue to poise UNO as the leader in technology talent development for our state and beyond. It is quite simple. If we want to respond to the state's dire need for more technology workers, we will all need to stand firm behind the PKI expansion. We must increase the input of students so we can expand the output of tech professionals. Being the te uh, destination for technology and innovation isn't just about staying ahead. It's about preparing our students to be leaders in their fields. And as, as we continue to embrace the future of technology across all disciplines, we must remain focused on providing exceptional educational experiences so that our learner can excel in this world. What does it mean? We will ask questions about future tech professionals. How can we stay ahead of the curve? You know, now is the first and only university in the state of Nebraska to offer a Bachelor of Science degree in AI. That also make us the 14th university in the nation joining 13 Ivy League and Ivy Plus University to offer such programs. The degree will teach students AI skill to meet the growing industry demands and stay ahead of technological advancement. But we must not stop there. There is so much more we can do.
Now, in the last three years, UNO has spent significant amount of time and strategy to curate our urban university profile, a university that understands workforce development and one that provides opportunities for all our learners through hands-on experience. Allow me to share some highlights on each college. The College of Arts and Science provides students with skills for today's job market. They are developing a first-year experience course, providing academic and personal support while helping students explore academic programs. Additionally, they have facilitated over 60 internships and practicums to connect students to the workforce. In the College of Business Administration, the nationally recognized programs are creating the next generation of leaders for Omaha. The Economics Research Seminar connected 163 community members through monthly sessions. And enrollment in the MBA program surged by 33%, addressing workforce demands by preparing highly skilled professionals for leadership role. For College of Education, Health, and Human Sciences, they provide a wide variety of programs that support our mission and address local workforce needs. The Department of Education leadership held the first Midwest two-day community leadership and education summit with almost 1,000 attendees. Also, the UNO Pitching Lab drew in global athletes and received significant press through interactive community engagement. In the College of Communication, Fine Arts and Media, students learn how to balance academics with application to prepare them for their future careers. Their School of Communication students have earned national acclaim with the Ma Forensic team consistently being ranked. Their public relations and advertising students receive top industry awards and the Ma Radio is ranked number five in the nation. The College of Information Science and Technology is a regional leader in supporting Nebraska workforce development when it comes to tech field. Over 300,000 was raised for scholarships, activities, and research. And a classroom renovation for an innovative code studio was completed thanks to a gift from FNBO. There was also a $4.7 million in research expenditures. Now, in the College of Public Affairs and Community Services, learners are empowered to make a meaningful difference in the world. Academic excellence is evidenced through the doctoral granting degree programs being highly ranked at number 13 in criminology and criminal justice and number 26 in public administration. They also provide learning opportunities for our Mavericks through internships and service learning projects where students explore solutions to current community challenges. I am grateful for the leadership of our senior vice chancellor, Dr. Phil Hur. Our colleges approach their mission with a well-defined purpose. Their common goal is to offer programs and experiences that allow our learners to grow and expand their knowledge while being able to apply these efforts back into our Omaha community. Let me also rapid fire news on some exciting new facilities. The STEM Child Center had just a grand opening. I was there. The space over Roskins Hall has already garnished 2.8 million on new grants and 3.4. My microphone just died. Okay, good. The Jung Science Center renovation project is now complete and we will celebrate the grand reopening of the building on December 3rd. The renovated space is the opening of Mathematic Sung, a tutoring center that supports students in UNO's college algebra sequence, which saw approximately 2,000 student visits in the spring semester. The newly renovated health and kinesiology facility will open in November and has already been an enrollment catalyst. For example, their kinesiology program has experienced the highest undergraduate enrollment to date at 320 students this coming year. This and that will allow be learning in this new state-of-the-art facility. And last but not least, 
If you've not been to the library for Starbucks, this is another reason for you to go. Our creative production lab has expanded over the Chris Library. It's amazing. Let me also give a shout out to our chief engagement officer, Dr. Julie Diaberger. You know it's all about community engagement. There are many benefits of community engagement through partnerships, experiential learning opportunities, and creative activity and research. Here at UNO, we have more than 400 community partners with over 9,000 students engaging with the community in and outside of the classroom. Finally, our student athletes have excelled both on and off the field this year, demonstrating their skills while maintaining a strong commitment to the academics. Across all sports, our Maverick athletes earned an average GPA of 3.43 in our spring 2024 semester. Outside of the classroom, we also had a banner year. Three spots won the Summit League Championship title, softball, men's soccer, and volleyball. Our Maverick athletes also made history this year in multiple fronts. Our hockey team made it past the first round in the NCHC playoffs and competed in the frozen face-off. Our men's soccer team made their first appearance in the NCAA Division I tournament. And our women's volleyball team also made their first appearance in an NCAA tournament this year. Additionally, our softball team won the Division I AAA All Sports Trophy. But not only do our student athletes excel in and out of the classroom, they also show up when our community calls. I will never forget hearing about our hockey players, basketball teams, and many more helping our community after the tornado swept through our neighborhoods. For that, I am truly proud and grateful for our students. Which leads me to tell you that we are also a destination for talent development. Our mission expands beyond just the classroom. It encompasses the growth of every individual who walks through our doors. We pride ourselves in creating an environment where talent is recognized and leaders are developed. From innovative research opportunities to facilities to mentorship programs to extracurricular activities, we offer a wealth of resources designed to promote our learners' potential and help them reach their dreams. And lastly, UNO is the destination for academic freedom. Our university works hard to up uphold the principles of academic freedom. And we foster the environment where respectful debate is not only welcomed, but encouraged. At UNO, we believe that the pursuit of knowledge thrives in an atmosphere where ideas can be freely exchanged. Being the destination for academic freedom means that we are enabling our UNO community to explore the diverse perspectives and engage in thoughtful conversation without fear. As a university, we have a moral responsibility to seek the truth despite uncomfortable discussions. UNO is dedicated to maintaining our neutral stance ensuring that our university remains a platform for open dialogue. Having different viewpoints should be seen at the utmost foundation of a university. Through respectful exchange of diverse opinions, we present an opportunity for growth and learning together. We must uphold our values and maintain our neutrality, yet, contribute to an environment that celebrates intellectual curiosity and encourages collaborative growth. While some may argue political neutrality is no longer a choice, we must not walk away from the commitment of allowing different opinions, no matter how we personally feel about the circumstances. On September 5th, our system installed the ninth president, Dr. Jeffrey Gold. We're turning a new page with our new leader. 
I know Dr. Go understands you and all because he was the chancellor for this great institution for four years. I am enthusiastic to welcome his intellect as an academic, his ability as the former system provost, and his wisdom as a visionary. I intend to work closely with Dr. Gold and support him to start important conversations on resource allocation so he can honor his vision, the Odyssey to Extraordinary. UNO will stand by to do its part. Now perhaps one of the biggest challenges for UNO is the current and future budget. As many of you know, our system has faced and continues to face a deficit, just like everywhere, everywhere else. You know, we must continue our conversations, continue our efforts with a sense of urgency, and increase our focus on our visions and strategies. We must advocate for our students, faculty, and staff, because this urban university is worth the investment of our state and our citizens. UNO you know, makes up about 33% of the student body for the University of Nebraska system, yet we receive less than 11% of the state dollars. There have been many sleepless nights where I contemplated on what honest conversation we must have to advocate for a reasonable budgetary support for our great faculty, staff, and students. Despite a thin budget, our purpose is to serve our community. One might back the question of how much our community is being valued under the current financial condition. And our goal as a metropolitan university committed to the core is to educate the learners of the world. Do you remember that space assessment I discussed earlier? Well, interestingly enough, that analysis showed that we are too lean to grow and our growth will be at the expense of our financial health if we fail to find an avenue to increase our budget. If we're callous, we could grow ourselves into bankruptcy. However, UNO has been holding steady for the last two decades at around 15,000 students, and our consultants tell us that, based on our current budget model, our optimal enrollment should be 12,500 students. While this may seem like a conundrum, we know that the right thing to do is to welcome all learners. After all, we are the destination for so many students who are the first in the families to go to college. Students that never imagined that college was for them and students who are inspired to pursue a specific program at this great campus. We will never ever turn our back against these students. That said, my personal belief is that our budget model is simply not sustainable. It is my job to advocate for you and for our students. I have no problem explaining the map to anyone who will listen, and maybe a few who won't. I will keep talking. I will continue to demand a fairer distribution of resources, one that does not leave our students, faculty, and staff disadvantaged, and one that allows us to grow. As the campus disproportionately relies on tuition dollars, it is important to be transparent about our tuition. Tuition growth has not kept up with inflation in recent years and has created significant challenges in our financial health. Based on the College Board study, the state of Nebraska's five-year average tuition increase after the adjustments for inflation is negative 10%. It is time to rethink the value of high education provided by UNO. UNO has never walked away from the responsibility as we strive to maintain our commitment to accessibility and academic excellence. There I say the value proposition of UNO is second to none. We must not talk down the quality education we provide for this community. 
family and student must be reminded that the University of Nebraska is a learner and a leader in higher education. And UNO is a community treasure. As a leading institution educating people of the world, we want to give our students quality education. The idea of earning a degree should not and will not be reserved for those who can afford it, but for those who have the ambition to succeed. It is essential that we work together to find innovative and scalable solutions that align with our goals for continued growth and success. So, let me pose a hypothetical question for y'all. How much are you willing to pay to attend one of Omaha's jewels, AKA us, you know? I want you to think about this question because our commitment to providing accessible education is at the heart of what we do here at this great university. This is why we fought to keep our tuition increase at a minimal number. After approval of our tuition increase of 3.3% by the Board of Regents in this past June, UNO's annual tuition fees are now at $8,718, making us one of the lowest in the state of Nebraska and in the country. In fact, we are the second lowest in tuition and fees among our peers compared to the 15 other states that we have the Omaha urban rate. Our tuition must remain competitive so we can continue to offer programs and be recognized for preparing our students to excel. And while we might not be in the cheapest contest, we are in competition to be the best value in higher education. We are here to march on with one mission. University of Nebraska at Omaha is committed to provide accessible quality education to the mass. When learners choose UNO, they benefit equally from the education experience and their finances. The value of an education is not only in the knowledge gained, but also in ensuring that this knowledge is accessible and attainable for all. Yet, we have been hit with another challenge. This year's FAFSA Simplification Act. This act was put in place to award federal financial aid to students with a goal of expanding Pell eligibility to more students. That's the thought at the time. However, due to flawed rollout, it did more harm than good. Families and students in need, like our students, didn't know that financial aid that they were eligible for and either put their college dreams on hold or abandoned it completely. This could reduce the professional workforce in our state, particularly for urban campus, campuses like UNO. Over 36% of UNO student body is Pell eligible. 85% of our student body are from the Metro Omaha area, and over one third of our student body are first generation, meaning they often do not have the guidance of a parent who is familiar with the education system. Additionally, about 25% of our students are Nebraska primers. In fact, UNO is the largest intake of Nebraska primer student by percentage of our student body. What does it mean? UNO honors our mission as an urban university and is proud to serve our community. But while our goal is to lower obstacles for entry of higher education, the dysfunction around the FAFSA has made this task exceptionally difficult. We work hard to make sure our students leave with minimal debt. The 2024 national student loan debt is around $1.77 trillion with a T. And on average, for graduate, it is about $37,000. This number is for, for those borrowers that have completed their degree. But for UNO, every student loan debt for our students is only about 19,000. This debt, actually, our students carry less debt than the national number, 
and have the lowest amount in the university system, lowest. We take immense pride in this. Out of our more than 125,000 total living alumni, more than 65,000 live and work in Omaha. This means that UNO students stay in Nebraska after graduation. According to the spring 2024 Nebraska Department of Labor data analysis, out of all students we serve, the post-graduation rate of our students that stay and work in Nebraska after their first year is 81%. By year five post-graduation, UNO's number remained high at 67%. By comparison, these numbers make UNO the best, the best performing campus within the university system in retaining talent for our state. This has proved that investing UNO is investing in Nebraska workforce. UNO transforms itself to be the most reliable talent development agency in the state of Nebraska. We fight to bring talent in and keep talent for the state. Which brings us to another challenge we face, which is the perception that economically underprivileged students are academically unprepared learners. While there is an existing correlation, we all know it doesn't shy away from identifying a solution. As I said in my last State of the University address, talent is equally distributed, but opportunities are not. After all, we cannot choose our parents. The latest data shows that we have improved our four to four cohort from 75% to 78% in student retention. However, we are not quite there yet. We will continue to work hard in this sense and ensure that our students will cross the finish line in an effective way. We stand up and say we are proud to serve this student body. After all, we celebrate those students who prevailed regardless of the economic backgrounds. The students who graduate from UNO and make Omaha their home are proud of the university. UNO's brand is strong and is growing. I know Midwest people are very modest. I know this because I married one. Yet today, I challenge each one of you to tell the story of UNO. Just like our apparel sale have, in 2021, UNO sold 20,000 branded gear. Through 2024, we have already sold 48,000. Your community is proud to wear your brand everywhere they go. And by the way, you're now, UNO is the proud Coca-Cola brand <laughs> on campus. <laughs> One and only. You no longer need to smuggle your Coca-Cola. <laughs> we have expanded programs, enhanced our facilities, and deepened our partnership with the community. These advancements underscore the dedication we have put into providing an exceptional education while contributing to the social and economic mobility of our learners within our state. Our commitment to academic excellence has been evident through our nationally ranked programs, innovation and research achieved, and the successes of our graduates. We have positioned UNO in a responsive way to let Omaha know that we are here and nothing will slow us down. As we look forward and the growing questions about the value and purpose of our education continues, we will push forward with our strengths and stand out as a leading university. Remember Larry Keeley, our last speaker from the Future Work Symposium back in December? He told me once, if you want to do good, be the best in its class or don't do it. This is why we changed our general education requirement to now be based on a new agreement with community colleges. Associate of Arts and Associate of Science degrees from regionally accredited institutions across the country 
will fulfill UNO's lower division general education requirements. This means we are aligning our academic programs to provide an effective academic journey for our students. And we're not going to stop there. We must continue to identify the most efficient and effective path for our learners because we cannot afford them stepping out. We must also keep an eye on our price, which is to be the destination that allows all Mavericks to learn, grow, and innovate. Together, we must uphold our values, ensuring that you know remains the leader in providing an exclusive and inclusive educational experience. The workforce has become a real challenge across the world. According to the World Economic Forum, around 50% of all employees will need reskilling and upskilling by 2025. So what did UNO do? We diversify the pedagogy of teaching. We have approached these challenges with a critical mindset. Within just this past year, we roll out our first micro-credential and many more to follow, addressing the needs by providing industry-relevant skills and allowing our learners to remain competitively in a rapidly evolving job market. Additionally, we introduce competency-based education. This means we allow students to advance based on the ability to master a skill at their own pace. Allow me to recognize our faculty, you, who approach and embrace this initiative with such courage and determination. We will continue to do this through the evolution of education, which is why we introduced our core statements last year. I want to remind all of you our commitment to the core statement that defines our institution. As we stand at the threshold of a transformative decade in higher education, UNO is committed to facing the challenges and embracing the opportunities that lie ahead. We are not afraid to meet the challenges coming our way. We will embrace the evolution of higher education because the future promises to be dynamic and demanding, but presents opportunities for growth and innovation within our own university. However, being the destination comes with a price, which is why we must extend our dearest gratitude to our philanthropic community. We are tremendously grateful for them. We know that as an urban university on a very meager budget, without the wonderful support, love, and care of our philanthropic community and the community at large, we cannot do the work we set out to do. Last year alone, UNO secured more than $57 million in private philanthropic support, even with our capital project. We set a record. UNO also surpassed 8,400 individual donors that supported UNO with a philanthropic gift, another record. In fact, UNO has been setting a record for third straight years. As part of the Only in Nebraska campaign, UNO is ahead of pace to exceed our fundraising goals by a lot. Are you surprised? I am not. I mean this in the nicest way. Truly, you all know it's worth the investment. In March, the Suzanne and Walter Scott Foundation gave a generous $20 million gift to support the Scott Scholar, right here at UNO. The growth of this program has been nothing short of transformative. This pledge allows more students to enroll in the highly competitive program and expands the capacity from 128 to 168 students. Since this program began, around 600 Scott Scholars have graduated, with more than 80% choosing to stay in Nebraska after graduation to pursue their careers. You know why? Because we are the destination. There are many more examples I could talk about, 
But the point is that our efforts would not be the same without our philanthropic support. As we navigate our steps towards the future of this university, we must remain focused on what awaits us. There is a famous quote being repeated again and again in hockey. Skate to where the puck is going, not where it has been. It is an insightful comment when it comes to strategy. But if everyone goes to where the puck is going to be, we will be in deep competition. May I suggest that we pay close attention to where everyone wants to be and mark my words. You know, we'll define the space where the puck will be. Together, we will continue to make UNO not only a place for learning, but a place where every individual will thrive and contribute to a brighter future of our community. Omaha, our campus, isn't just part of your journey. It is the destination. Thank you.